for tuning in. We hope that through these times, we are coming through the other side, that you are still doing well. We are so happy that, you know, we're starting to experience a new kind of normal, that we're just coming out of this, the other side. But, you know, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the spirit of fear. The fear that maybe we have felt over the last few months or maybe just in our lives in general. You know, a spirit of fear does not come from God. You know, a spirit of fear hinders what he has given us. And 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 tells us he has given us a, a spirit of power, a spirit of love and a sound mind. And fear is a weapon that Satan uses against us. And it's one of the greatest weapon he uses. Our insecurities are attacked. Our image, we fear how people see us. What do I even look like with my nine-year-old car? I'd much rather have a brand new car. Money worries. Specifically now, we're getting ready to return to work and that's great. But what will the financial cost be on me? What will the financial cost be on my family? Maybe a few months down the road, like we're worried about if we can pay rent. And this plays on our mind. Satan tells us we're no good. Sure, look it. You can't even afford to look after your own family. You know, he tells you these insecurities, he repeats them to you. You can't afford the roof over your head. What's going to happen to you? God doesn't care. And if he, if he did, you'd be able to afford to feed yourself. I've always been afraid of change. When I was a child, a toddler more so, my parents brought me to get my very first pair of shoes. And... That should have been a pretty exciting time for me. It probably was for my parents, but for me, the whole concept was just baffling. I couldn't understand. I couldn't wrap my toddler head around it. I stood in the middle of Shaw's department store as it was at the time in Port Leash, and I was just no expression. I stared at my feet and I, I was just frozen there. And I stayed, I stayed in that position until they got me to bring me home. And that wasn't even my first experience with something changing. I, a few little, just a little while later, I was placed into my very first bed. And my dad will tell me to this day that the same frozen expression came over my face. And every time he checked on me, my eyes were just peeping out in horror at him. And I fell asleep that way. And I stayed that way until the morning. And that was my first fear. Of the unknown that that's when it first started and you know in comparison my younger sister she had no fear she had serious confidence and ability in herself you know even even if that meant half killing off my heavily pregnant mother at the time she jumped into the deep end of a swim pool uh, a number of years ago and my poor mother heavily pregnant as she was you know we couldn't believe whenever she swam out of the pool totally fine about what had happened you know there was no fear in her whereas I was the child that was convinced that Jaws could somehow end up in my bath <laughs> so I'm just going to talk about you know a little bit about the fear of the unknown what's going to happen in our lives at the minute and just from a personal experience a few weeks ago a close friend's mother lost her life in a tragic accident and with others I cried out to God to heal her and I prayed she would come through and I was afraid what was going to happen for the future what was going to happen to my friend she's she's newly married what was going to happen next and you know we did exactly what God wants us to do during these times we called out to him we can't do this alone we needed to trust in his power and authority was I heartbroken that my prayers weren't answered in the exact way I wanted them to be of course it was of course, I was devastated, but you know, God gave me a peace because he can see the bigger picture. He knew that if this lady had survived, we don't know what quality of life she would have had. We don't know the extent of maybe her injuries or how she would have coped with life day to day. He gave me an immense peace about it all and because, you know, he knows my heart. He knows my fears. If you see me at big events, conferences for example 99% of the time you'll see me hanging beside my dad and that's not because he's a cool person or I love hanging out with him I do but it's because the room is usually full of people I don't know it's full of the unknown 
my dad is also the first person I ring when my car breaks down. I have breakdown assistance. What can he do? But he's also the first person that any grown-up woman would call when they see a spider. I do what any grown-up woman does when they see a spider and immediately call DAD! Excuse me. <laughs> In the same way, I can cry out to God and tell him about my fears. The unknown part of my life, what I'm worried about. You know, Romans 8 tells us, what then can we say in response to these things? If God is for us, what can be against us? And you know, how amazing is that? My fear has no chance of even attempting to bring me down. The devil tells us we are inadequate. But Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 3 verses 5 and 6, our qualifications come from God. I cannot do it alone, but in God, through the death of Christ, I, we are made adequate. The past three or four months have been full of fear, the unknown. And does that mean that God has no clue what he's doing? Do you think he's lost control or he's sitting up there like, whoops, <laughs> didn't see that happening? No, no, absolutely not. You know, 1 Peter 5 verses 6 and 7 tells us we can bring our worry, our fear to him because he cares. If you're kind of listening to me right now and you're unsure of the Bible or where to look in the Bible, how do I search in the Bible for fear or someone who like experienced fear? I often use Google. I've been reading the Bible the majority of my life, but sometimes Google is is the best way. Or 99% of the time, anybody in my family, in this house, they are seen with earphones on. Music is, you know, it speaks to me so much. It means a lot my family. I turn on worship music. And, you know, I'm just, there's so much written on a spirit of fear or how God can conquer fear at the minute. I'm going to give you a few examples. The first one, I was even listening today as I was writing this. Just my notes and just typing things out. It's called Sea of Victory and it's, the, it's, it's a version with Surrounded by Elevation Worship and Brandon Lake. And this is how I fight my battles, the lyrics go. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what battle you feel you're fighting, we're surrounded by God. We have God on our side. Graves into Gardens by Elevation Worship has been a favourite of a few of us so far. The all-consuming fear that I used to have in my life, he turned into something. He used that to grow me. He can turn your ugly into something beautiful. There is another in the fire by Hillsong Worship. No matter what we are going through, God is with us in that fire of uncertainty. And Ren Collective, they have so many. They're my favourite band at the minute. They have my lighthouse. He shines in the darkness. I will follow him. He is the peace in our troubled sea. I could go on. God is greater than our fears. I am greater than the anxiety diag diagnosis that I have. But God heard me. God heard me when I cried out to him and he still hears me. He still hears me and he still brings peace to my life today. Bring your fears, bring your worries to him because believe me, he cares. Thank you so much for listening.